Hey, what's up, guys? Once again, miniature, and this time from one of the best players in the history of chess, Robert James Fisher. Uh, what I'm really impressed uh, with uh, is his style of not only his style of play, not only his games, results, uh, the way that he was actually beating up his opponents almost with zero, but actually, when I nowadays analyze his games through the engines, all his moves are usually in most of the times i don't want to say like 100 percent, but most of the times top moves crazy strong chess player and here i want to uh, introduce you one of the famous miniatures between fisher and rubinetti uh, this game uh, took its place back to 1917 palma de mallorca and uh, for example thanks to the following game I actually learned so many things about Sicilian. So hopefully uh, the following video and the following game is going to help you in terms of getting better understanding of uh, Nidorf games, Scheveningen games, and these type of uh, similar pawn structures in the Sicilian type of the games. So let's get started. Let's begin this game. I'm not going to take much of your time. Uh, Fischer played e4. Robinetti responded with Sicilian c5. Fischer played open Sicilian with the knight f3 and this guy went for the most popular d6 move. Fischer played e4 of course. What else? Uh, when you play the open Sicilian you just want to fight uh, strong for the center. He opens up the game and opens up both of his bishops. This is considered to be the most ambitious continuation by white against Sicilian. After c takes, knight takes, knight f6, knight c3. And this guy went for nowadays a little bit overpassed variation. It's called Scheveningen. Um, it's kind of interesting. For example, Kasparov made so many good results in his youthhood with this opening. And it's a very, very flexible and always difficult for white players. For example, I remember when I was younger, when somebody played Scheveningen against me, I hated that opening so much. And simply, all those transpositions, all those, you know, like different kinds of variations, small subtleties, uh, forced me to somehow hate this opening and always had uh, lots of troubles against it. Anyways, Fischer was famous that he always against Nidorf played Sows in line against Nidorf and against this e6 he went for bishop c4. This is at the same time uh, possibly if black goes for a6 transposition into the Sozin variation but it in most of these variations it can transpose into the Velimirovich attack famous Velimirovich attack where you play bishop on e3 queen on e2 and long castle here that wasn't the case because black went for a6 and all of a sudden we have Sozin variation against neither of defense considered to be very popular used to be very popular not nowadays anymore and after bishop to b3 preventively moving this bishop away from some b5 b5 played castle and there we go for example the following move made by rubinetti uh, is considered to be even from this game uh, onwards was considered to be uh, kind of you know i'd say suspicious for a black because bishop b7 all of a sudden weakens control of uh, and the defense of the e6 pawn and there are so many bishop takes e6 or knight takes e6 sacrifices uh, for the rest of the game so after like bishop e7 of course the, the better idea was bishop e7 keeping the bishop on c8 keeping control of the e6 pawn and at the same time preparing himself for the may castle uh, rubinetti played bishop e7 he left control of the e6 pawn but at the same time he shows some uh, hyper ambition to take that pawn on e4 and uh, we just have to uh, notice two things first of all fisher played rookie one and all of a sudden and from this point onwards uh, he uh, by placing that rook on e1 and defending the pawn on e4 he's not only defending that but threatening lots of nasty things about the e6 pawn and on top of all that he's ready to sometimes place some of his pieces whether it's knight on d5 or in some circumstances even crazy bishop d5 rabinetti played 
the most flexible Knight BD7 and Fischer went for the last minor piece to develop and he played Bishop G5 nothing special normal move developing one but take a look at this one now Rabinetti has lots of difficulties to complete his development because he left control and left the defense of the e6 pawn uh, pretty much so if Bishop e7 what would you do just Bishop e6 and if f takes e6 knight e6 and if the queen goes somewhere take on g7 and jump with the knight on f5 and it's pretty difficult position for black because uh, you've just uh, taken three pawns for the piece which is more than enough uh, second thing the pawn on d6 is hanging and finally king on f7 is kind of broken I mean there is no castle for this king everything seems to be terrible for black so if you're like h6 uh, Fisher moved his bishop back on h4 and knight c5 and there we go one of the most uh, famous sacrifices in the history of Sicilian opening and uh, these uh, Sicilian games and miniatures like that so Fisher uh, here for example nowadays everybody would consider hey can I play some break with e5 can I play a4 breaking on the queen side that pawn structure can I even I don't know jump with the knight on d5 but Fisher was the first one who played bishop to d5 ever since this game this bishop d5 idea became so popular and at the moment when the game was played uh, it wasn't it wasn't known in the history of chess so what's the point of bishop d5 you just go after uh, the bishop on b7 uh, your bishop on d5 is pretty much uh, untouchable actually the rest of this game is gonna show you that but what's the point you just want to go with b4 kicking that knight away and uh, at the same time they're going to have problems with the bishop on b7 if you take by bishop then the e file would be open uh, you can't take by knight uh, from another point of view uh, Robinetti decided to take if you ask me I would also take but this just leads to uh, serious consequences for black because all of a sudden after e takes d5 your rook goes after the king and that's not only the only thing first of all they can't play bishop e7 because you have famous knight f5 to uh, carry on attacking the bishop on e7 and making the pressure in his game but at the same time uh, now when he has to go with the king on d7 king on d7 becomes a weak piece yes you're down a piece but sometimes intuitively in your games you can just fill the moment where you can sack a piece just like Fisher did here you don't have anything that concrete like mate in one winning the queen immediately but you just fill it first of all he lacks like a proper development of his pieces he lacks like a proper um, king safety as well and also uh, take a look at these pieces take a look at the rook queen bishop uh, uh, rook on h8 and on top of all that king on d7 looks uh, pretty weak uh, that gives you for example not only here but in this position obviously what is the one who's in the driver's seat but that actually gives you uh, like lots of chances in the future uh, when you play games like this to sack a piece and simply to say okay I have like enough of compensation I have enough in the, of initiative so let me just sack the piece and uh, for the rest of this game to play an initiative not do you think that he was he saw all these things no no he just realized okay um, he's behind in development his pieces are uh, kind of uh, disharmonized so let me just go after his king and it paid off in paid off in the next 10 moves first of all he played before a strong move kicking this knight away knight has nowhere to go but on a4 if he doesn't want to give it for free Fisher captures and does a very nice move solidifying his pawn structure threatening to take an a4 on top of all that by playing c4 and having these pawns on c4 and d5 take a look at the bishop on b7 it, it just became weak king on d7 uh you know he's in the air so you're uh, actually he's on the wind i'd say and it's pretty windy around this king and at the same time take a look at the bishop on h4 that pins the knight on f6 they have lots of problems and troubles in this position and that's why um after a c4 
Fisher's opponent, Rabinetti played king c8. Finally, I can braid away, my king is safe, but okay, buddy. I'm taking on a4, and what do I have? I have two pawns for the piece. You have weak king, and you absolutely suck in your development, buddy. So after queen a4, black played queen d7. And here, don't you dare to trade the queens off, otherwise I'm gonna come there and uh, beat you in black and blue. So basically, you're not supposed to play of course to exchange queens in when you're down a piece because simplifying the games would definitely help your opponents so queen goes back to b3 so you keep the queen you keep the tangent on the board and that basically uh, creates lots of you know like um instabilities around the king on c8 so after he went for g5 bishop g3 played knight h5 the guy was happy to go with this king on h5 to get rid of the bishop on g3 and i'll be 100 percent honest with you if i had to play this game with a white pieces i'd be very afraid that he's about to solidify himself with the knight takes g3 and bishop g7 although fisher is fisher and he finds the best move he finds a move to break and to open fully this king and show his opponent who's uh, who's the boss Fisher played c5, opens up c5, threatens c6 at a moment, has to take, he captures, and once again the guy had to take. Of course, uh, behind this um, c5 pawn sack, uh, there is a very precise calculation, because after queen d5, where black threatened mate in one, and wanted to trade the queens off, Fisher ca calculated properly that after check, check, bishop c6, Knight c6 is enough to win the game and his opponent immediately resigned because queen cannot take on c6 because rook d1 and king and queen would have to separate in which case the queen is fallen afterwards the rook on a8. An amazing game, amazing quality and once again uh, take a look and analyze games of this guy. He was certainly one of the greatest chess players in the history of this game. Thanks for watching, subscribe sometimes the mate and uh, hopefully uh, we're gonna have more of similar even better content in the future thanks so much and see you soon